Hey everybody, good old Terry here. Got a nice shiny P47 here. You can see this thing reflects beautifully up close, out far, at all distances. In fact, that's why I'm wearing my hat today, because if I took it off, the light reflecting off my bald head would shine so hard off that P47 would blind you, like looking at the sun. Anyway, you got quite a few people asking for the technique, and uh, being that there's no secrets in scale modeling, I'm happy to share them with you. Well, let me tell you how it's done. Okay, what you need? Well, of course, a model kit. You can, uh, you're going to want to polish the plastic, and then uh, you're going to want to prime it. What I do is I polished this with, uh, with Flitz Polish which is uh, this little stuff here available on Amazon and for the second part I hit it with the uh, Tamiya compound the finish grade the, uh, the finish grade make sure you get that one the black box that's a little finer than the others uh, in a pinch you might be able to use um, some Magyar's uh, Plastex on the second part um, and I have, I use this on the uh, wife's car. I haven't tried it on any models, but some say the ultimate compound works as well. But, uh, what works for me has been the, uh, Flitz and the Tamiya finish compound. Uh, good luck finding this. It's kind of hard to find, but, uh, I'm sure if you order it from Taiwan or China, you can get it in about eight weeks. <laughs> anyway, uh, so... Uh, the first one is primed with uh, gloss black. I used Mr. Color GX2. This stuff likes to go on bare plastic a lot more than it likes to go on primed plastic. So if you're ever using it for anything else, um, I'd put it on the bare plastic. It just looks much better. For you Tamiya folk out there, um, I don't see any reason you couldn't use their X1. It's pretty darn shiny. If you're good at applying gloss coats, you should be able to do that. Um, being that the uh, metal is going to be a lacquer you're going to probably want to give it a good long time to dry before mixing those up i'm not a uh, not a chemist or anything i'm just going by hearsay that it could cause you problems uh, maybe somebody who knows a little more about chemicals can uh put down in the comments whether that's good advice or no advice if you like the water-based stuff uh kind of water-based i like the mr hobby aqueous um you can use their black um being that black's kind of tough to get your hands on right now, in a pinch, uh, you could try using this H55 Midnight Blue, which, um, as you can see, this is closer to a black than it is to a blue. So if you can't get your hands on the black, you might get away with this. It's thinned with Mr. Uh, Leveling Thinner. And for the other one, um, I coated this one with something lighter. We'll see how that turns out, if it makes any big difference. And again, polished plastic the same way. I used, I used Mr. Color C101 Smoke Gray. For Tamiya people, you can use the X19 Smoke. And um, you can also use, if you want like water-based, more mild stuff, you can use the H95 Mr. Hobby uh, Smoke Gray. Also good stuff. Um, for the metal, and that, by the way, all three of these also as well have been, can be thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinner. For the metal, I've used the uh, Mr. Metal Color. It's MC218 Aluminum. And I thin this ever so lightly, ever so lightly with uh, Mr. Rapid Thinner. Uh, I'm only thinning it at all because it's a little thick in the, uh, in the bottle there. I wouldn't thin it too much because it's going to bite into the plastic too much. You won't be able to polish it off as well. So just be careful how much you thin that. You'll also need paper towels. And this is a messy job, pretty messy job. So if you can get your hand on some food gloves, you know, powder-free gloves, that's good to use because um, it's a messy job and you're just going to get the stuff all over your fingers. And um, that brings me to the last thing I'd bring, and that's some, uh, some alcohol, some IPA alcohol. I use 99%. You can use, I'm sure, 90, 70, you know, something like that. Because all you're doing is using it to wash your hands off. And um, let's talk about how it's done. Now. Okay. I'm shooting this through an Iwata HPCS airbrush. I'm doing this at 18 PSI. 
And I'm just going to get a couple little drops. Let's go with, uh, let's say, two, one, El Doso. That's Spanish for uh, B, which is English for two. Anyway, a couple of those. Going to get the, uh, the aluminum paint here. And I'm going to get a toothpick. I like these little things for this kind of stuff. Uh, some people will give you the lecture on using the metal stirrer and save the earth and all that, but you know what? Then you gotta throw out a paper towel and use thinner. So either way, pick your waste. You know what I mean? Stir it up pretty good. Um, and this really should be done outside of the airbrush cup, but you know, because lazy and because time consuming and all that other stuff and this just being a demo, um, you know, I'm not gonna be too concerned with that. And I'm just going to put about the official measurement of what's known as yay much in there. Mix it up a little bit. And then I'm just going to hit the first light coat here. Very lightly. Let me try to do this on the camera where you can see it. And you can see... You know, spray discipline isn't going to be a big deal here. In fact, a little variance is going to be good for you. And I'm going to let that sit about 30 seconds. Keep in mind, I live in the desert out here. Things dry kind of quick. But the big thing is you don't want to let it dry too long because then you end up having it dry to the plastic and it won't come off. And now I'm going to just kind of start buffing it lightly. Gradually increasing my pressure. And about halfway through the job, I'm going to flip it over to the clean side. And, you know, technique isn't everything here. This is just a demo. And you can see it's starting to shine already. And I've lost, I don't know if the phone's going to catch this well, but I've lost about half my paint. Nothing to worry about yet. Because that's what's gonna that's just how it goes and then I'm gonna hit it with a second coat here this time a little heavier again I'm not worried about even coverage here because I'd like a little variance in the metal looking get roughly 30 seconds which is just enough time to reach over to the side and Rip your paper towels into smaller pieces. And I'm going to rub it again. About halfway through, flip it over. Damn it, I picked something up and I scratched it, but that's okay. It's just a demo and I can strip this off later and reuse it. So, all right. And now it's starting to really get a little more of a metallic color here. These are pretty darn intense bulbs I got up here, so hopefully it'll show up as metal and not black. But and then finally a third coat. I'm going to stop there. And of course you might want to put a fourth on depending on how it's going, how much you've rubbed, how much you put on. And I'm trying to find a way to get a little more variance than just swirling at random is giving me here. But, you know, I'm kind of more concerned about finding a cure for the durability problem than anything. Now remember, don't let it dry too long here because what you're going to end up with, let me lower the camera here so it's not so hard to do this. There we go. What you don't want to do is end up uh, letting this paint dry too long because it's going to stick and it's not going to shine because you can't get it off easily. All right, let me get that stick out of the way. There we go. And turn it over. I know this is not fast motion. I really am that quick. Hold comments. I know what you guys are thinking. You, 
dirty vestiges. Anyway, uh, and you can see I'm not even holding. I, some swirls back and forth, some side to side, some up down. It's really not making too much. It's not going to make any difference if you do it right. And of course, you're going to see fingerprints on here because remember I told you it's messy. Looky here. So anyway, there you go. And as you can see, let me pull something over here. Reflects the jar nicely up close. It's reflecting my. Get it aimed at it. Out of the light, there's my hand over there. Far away. And if I take it up here, let me turn the phone up. You can see it's reflecting the whole entire hobby bench area. And even out there, you can see it's reflecting out the garage door. So you're not limiting yourself to something that looks good up close, and then as you move back, it loses all its reflectivity. See this light up here, let me show you. That light, that twin light is reflecting. That is way up here on the roof. Over me. See? So this is a good deep reflection. As I try to reposition my camera in a manner that's going to help you. There we go. Alright, so again, if you do it slowly and take your time to do it right, you're going to get a better result on that than I did just showing you really quickly. So let's do it with the... Uh, with the gray one now, okay? Ooh, this is gonna be offset my internal over. Here we go. Can the light coat just enough on the first one to barely cover it up? Give it about 30 seconds here. I'm not gonna give it quite that much. You know the old saying this is exciting as watching paint dry? Well we are watching paint dry, aren't we? Anyhow, again, start out lightly and increase your pressure as you go. You might want to use round swirls back and forth, side to side. I'm just mixing it up because it's a demo, and I have found that it doesn't care which way I do this. The result at the end ends up the same. The big thing is. Uh, don't let it dry too long. So you can see here, it's getting a little silver color there. It's starting to look good. And now let's hit it with the second coat. I still got some paint there too. A little thicker. This time paint it to where it's opaque. Now, again, I'm doing random patterns. I want this to look just a little out of sorts so that when you look at it from different angles, you're going to see different things going on with the metal. Because, frankly, if it's all the same, it's just going to look like chrome, like a car bumper, and it's kind of boring to look at. It doesn't change like an airplane does when you move around it. Okay, it's about 15 seconds. I'll give it another 10. That'll do the job. Take toothpick off this point. See what I meant about the hands? Look at that. All right, so starting out light, increasing the pressure as I go. Oops, sorry, folks. Get a little excited about my polishing here. We get another clean one here. I kind of like the smoke actually better than the black, folks. I think it actually uh, gives you a lighter metal. If you like the dark looking stuff, go with the black. But I kind of like this gray better. See, now we're really starting to get somewhere with that. You see how the at random patterns and the at random depths that I'm spraying it with are giving me a little bit of what would look like oxidized metal, which is what I'm trying to get at. I love that for P47s. If you're a Mustang guy, you might not care for that, but Mustangs are like quarterbacks on a football team. They're nice and pretty. <laughs> I'm a P-47 guy. Linebacker. <laughs> the linebacker of airplanes. Alright. This time. A little more. And that's perfect because I'm about to run out of paper towel cuts here, so... It hasn't been 30 seconds, but let's, let's get it off of there anyway. 
It's a little better to do it too soon than too late because you can always put more on if you end up rubbing the paint off too early. But once it's on there and it's made itself a home, man, you're going to, you know, then it's, you're going to have to strip it out and redo it. Get my other clean one. All right. I'm going to just this lightly and quickly. Now look at that, man. See? See the light over me? You can see everything. Look at that. You can see my, my pencil right here. Look at that. The whole darn thing. Look how I'm moving these farther and farther apart. I mean, this thing's just really holding the reflectivity up beautifully. See? Now for the final step, what I like to do, well, let me cap my paint before I ruin it here really quick. Bear with me just a few seconds, fellas. As I shake my camera and put things away. Now I like to get my Vallejo pigments. My Vallejo pigments. This is 73123. Dark steel. Acero oscuro. Acieri Fonche. See, I know all that because it's right here on the label. I'm not that smart. See? Anyhow. What I like to do is get a Q-tip and get my wings out here. I don't need you in here. Get. All right, I'm gonna get my dark steel pigments here, and then what I do? Load it up pretty good. Don't rub it on here. No tail rubbo. Don't rub. Just tap it over so it falls onto it. Because I'm gonna show you. What happens on one part of this if you try to rub it on here with the Q-tip, okay? Right over here, okay? Take note, I'm going to rub it on here with the Q-tip. And you're going to see what happens is you're going to get a spot that just don't look right. And if your Q-tip is one of those cheap ones that doesn't have much cotton on it, you're going to get a big rub in there. So the first thing I do, I just get these on, rub it in, rub, get it lightly to kind of spread out. And then you can start increasing your pressure as you rub. And it's going to give you just a hair more shine and a little depth. Now, get a clean piece of paper towel, rub it out the rest of the way. Okay, here's what was primed with the black. I mean, everything everywhere is reflecting off that. And here's the one that was from the, uh, the smoke. And then, you can see it with the eye, but you can't see it with the camera, but right in here there's a pretty harsh swirl, but the limitations of an iPhone are not going to give you that, but you can see how nice he's looking, how quick and easy that was, see? Now, if you use some better towels, some better paper towels, like uh, these blue auto shop towels, or uh, better yet, a cotton cloth, you're not going to get um, those uneven spots on there that you might see if I point them out, like uh, right back here a little bit, and uh, like up here. But again, I like my metal look slightly lived in, so I like that oxidation look. But if you use those you're, you're, and you uh, take your time with it and you don't fly through it like I just did, you're going to find that um, you're going to get a much better evenness on the metal. But to me, then it just ends up looking like all clad. And, you know, it's going to reflect better than all clad and reflect farther than all clad, but it just looks too even. And even brand new out of the factory, as shiny as they come, you're not going to see them look like that. You're going to see as you change your angles, 
that the panels look a little different, which a lot of people emulate by using different colors on their different panels. Um, which looks fine as long as they don't overdo it. Sometimes it just looks corny and overdone, but you know, I'm no, I'm no expert. I just do what I do. So anyhow, that's how it's done, folks. That's really all there is to it. Looks good. Oops, see, just a little bit of alcohol, just a little residual alcohol in my hands. See, which brings us to the durability problem. Um, the uh, you're not going to want to mask this at all. Detacking the tape ain't going to help you. You're going to have to do what I did, and that's uh, before you put the metal on, you're going to have to paint your anti-glare, your stripes, everything. You know, your um, your heat shielding for the different metal. Uh, everything's going to have to be done separately and then taped over when you put the metal on. And um, I did experiment with decals. Uh, Salvaset eats it up. But to me, a mark fits strong. If you don't uh, wait too long, we'll be okay. In fact, what I'll do for you here, let me pull it out right now. I'll get some mark fits. I'll get some mark fit strong out here and uh, put it on there. And uh, dip it in and get it really pretty heavy here. And I'll just put it over this cover here. You can see it's not doing anything. I'm rubbing it around a little bit. It's done nothing to the Q-tip. But if I leave it here set, and I let it, especially if I let it pull up, let me put it outside the border so you can see it easier. Now you may not see this, but if you look carefully, right up here and in the square. Look at that. I'm all the way back here and it sees me. Beautiful. Well, anyway, but you see it's, it's not really doing anything to it but if I give it if I just sit here and I keep on a rubbing you can see ever so slightly some of it's starting to come off all right and again durability issues fingerprints see I got a fingerprint there from handling it of course I kind of parked it there when the paint was still wet but general fingerprints if I just do this not picking them up but that doesn't mean I'd be handling it with my bare hands I go I put more darn alcohol in these hands as I build than you can imagine so they're probably pretty pretty clean from that stuff but you can see any any residual alcohol or stronger it's gonna take some it's gonna take it off there masking it out let's give that a try real quick I'm gonna go in here and just pull out some uh, to me tape I'll use the skinny stuff because that's what I have the most of. I'm not going to detack it or anything. Uh, let's just put it on here, put it across. Rub it on there pretty good. And now look, it's, it's cheating me. It's not showing you. But if you look on the back of the tape, you're going to see, and it might just be the pigment powders. You can see just a little bit off of there. Um, and if I get the camera angle just right, you can see it right about there. You can see it ever so slightly. Just enough to where if the angle's right, it's going to make your eye twitch. But probably not too much to you. Um, protecting it, I've tried using um, Aqua Gloss, which even Aqua Gloss robbed it pretty bad. Um, Tamiya X22 robbed it. Um, the Vallejo varnish robbed it. What I'm gonna try is the uh, Mission Models clear gloss uh, later on. That stuff's pretty docile. I'll see what it does, but uh, that's gonna be on another report. But anyway, there you go. Hope this helped you out. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and we'll talk to you guys later. On. Hey, I'm gonna throw you in a freebie here. You're getting a bonus for absolutely no extra cost. Rubbing alcohol, 99%. Watch how quickly this comes clean. It's gone. See? It's down to the F. So if you get into trouble and you need to fix something, no problem, man. And this is the uh, Mr. Color underneath it. It comes right off that 99% alcohol. If you can get your hands on it, it's pretty easy to find. I got mine um, on Amazon. It wasn't too expensive at all. But, you know, 
Uh, it comes right off of there. It comes off nice and clean. Now these wings are ready for uh, for their next assignment. See how quickly that stuff comes off? So that's pretty good. All right, that's really it. See you later.